Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Faye. Good morning, Jacob. Good to have you guys with me this morning. I'm going to do a devotion this morning. Sorry I run a little bit late. Good to see you guys. Good morning, Penny. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning. Hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We are starting off our morning devotion for the week. So uh, tag a friend, share, let me know where you're watching from. Good morning. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning, Nelly. Good morning, Jeffrey. I um, want to talk to you about your friends today. Talk to you about that circle that you run in. Good to have you guys this morning. Good to have you guys with us. You know, um, life changes. Things change. Friends come and go. Um, what we have to think of is we have to keep our circle small. We have to keep um, those the people that are closest to us. We need to we need to vet them. We need to be very careful because God, you're not where you're supposed to be right now. You're not where God wants you to stay. Let me put it that way. You have places God wants to take you, and God has to move in your life to get you to them places. Sometimes God removes people from your life. And I had an old preacher tell me one time. Good morning, Frank. An old preacher told me one time, he says, if God removes people from your life, don't go back and try to get them. He said, because if you get them back, he may let you deal with them. Sometimes God moves people because, not necessarily because they're a harm or a hindrance to you, but maybe it's just not God's will that you walk with them in this season. So this message is um, something that's been on my heart this morning. So let's get right to it. I want to start with one scripture, Proverbs 13, verse 20. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Devotions if you're watching for the first time. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that walketh with wise men shall he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Like I was saying, sometimes people come in our lives and, and then they're, they're, they're removed, they, they leave. And I've experienced this more so in ministry than any other time in my life. I still have friends that I run with when I was lost that are, some of them are lost, and they're just as tight with me as ever. I, they're all, they always got my back. But I have found that in church or in the Christian life that there are people that come and go pretty easily. And a lot of times they go, they come because they have an agenda, and they go because they don't, you don't, that agenda is not met through that friendship. But a friend is someone that comes and accepts you for who you are, and is a friend in the good times and in the bad times. And that's the kind of friends that we want, but it's hard to find those friends. It's hard to see sometimes if those are the real friends we have. I just got a lot on my mind. I'm going to try to be brief here, though. I was reading about Joseph. Are thinking about him too this morning. His father gave him a coat of many colors. And that coat was a beautiful coat, and his brothers were jealous of him. And see, then Joseph had a dream. As a matter of fact, matter of fact he had two dreams that insulted his brothers and even made his father question because he told them they would bow to him. They would one day bow to him. And, and he was prophesying what was going to happen in his life. That coat meant a lot to Joseph. and But his brothers were jealous of that. And so they conspired to kill him and they stripped him of his coat they took his coat from him and they threw him in a pit now that coat was special to joseph because it was something his daddy gave him but see he was depending on that coat he was depending on i think maybe he did feel set apart wearing that coat maybe he did feel prideful wearing that coat because i don't care who we are we're all subject to pride the Bible says pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a great fall. Pride is why we stand in division sometimes. Pride is why we stand in, in, and are not unwilling to come and make things right because of pride. Nevertheless, Joseph probably had some pride in his life because of the coat he had on. I don't know, but God allowed it to happen. He allowed his brothers to strip him of it, cast him in a pit, and he went on to be sold into slavery. God removed that thing that he felt set him apart that thing that made him special, that coat that he felt like his daddy gave him that he would keep forever. You know, sometimes God does things in our lives and we feel special and we feel set apart and we feel that we're on the right path, but then God will take that away. He'll allow us to be stripped of that and then we'll come back to reality that really and truly what makes us special is our relationship with Jesus Christ, not with people, not with things that are given to us, not with position, but with Jesus Christ. The Bible says that 
he, there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. In my circle of friends, I need to understand there's really only one true friend that I can depend on no matter what, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expect expectations is from Him. I don't expect anything from people. I'm not going to expect anything from, from business and, and from the world that's going to satisfy my soul. I expect from God. That's what the scripture means. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Joseph, even though he was stripped and thrown in a pit and sold and went into slavery in Potiphar's house, he had a choice to make. He could have gotten bitter. He could have become very angry, but he didn't. Joseph humbled himself, and God kept exalting him. You know, the Bible says if we humble ourselves, God will raise us up. Speaking of humility... Sometimes it's hard for us that feel wronged or hurt by friends to humble ourselves because we feel that they owe us an apology or we feel that they didn't do something that, we, that they should have done. And I was thinking along those lines, and so this scripture comes to me as well. I hope I'm not rambling, but this is just what's on my heart. And while beholdest thou the moat. Now check this out. This is a scripture we, we quote a lot of times about judging others, but God just flipped the script. Has God ever flipped the script? Somebody type in flip the script. <laughs> God flipped a script on me this morning on this scripture and turned it, and I, it was just like a mirror. Bam, looked me right in the face. And why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye? See, I can see what's wrong with everybody else. I can see everybody else's faults, but it's hard to see my faults because I don't want to see them. Why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye? But consider not the beam that is in thine own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in my own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine eye, and thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Now it takes me right back to Joseph. I know this is crazy, but this takes me, takes me right back. Joseph had something stripped from him. He had that coat, that beautiful coat stripped from him. But instead of blaming someone, Joseph trusted God. Now look, God removed something of the world. That was a worldly coat. That was something that his daddy made him. God took it away so to clear, so he could see clearer, so he could see what's important. It's not about what people do for you. It's not about what positions people can give you, but it's about what God is doing in your life. God will remove people from your life to move you to another, another place, a different, a higher level, a different level, maybe a lower level sometimes, you know. God will move you because God is trying to perfect your faith. He's trying to, he'll move people because he's trying to perfect your faith. He don't want us to trust in friendship above him. He doesn't want us to trust in people above him. He wants us to trust in him. And when we look at other people's problems and we see everybody else's faults, like I said, it's hard sometimes to see our own. But as I was reading these scriptures and thinking about this devotion this morning, God really laid it on my heart. David, you've got a lot of things that I've got to deal with in you. And I'm going to remove people out of your life. Because it's going to hurt you. It's going to, it's going to hurt you, but it's going to humble you. I'm going, to, I'm going to bring people into your life for a season. I'm going to move people out. There will be people that you don't even realize that you'll end up with later on in life. That you're going to work in ministry with me or you're going to work in some capacity to honor God. But the bottom line is this. Don't put your faith in man. Don't put your faith in people. Put your faith in God that sends those people your way to help you in whatever God's got what his will is for you to do. I saw on Facebook yesterday, somebody had posted, it's really quite a good post. I mean, you, you've probably seen it before. Be careful. Uh, how does it go? How did it go? About the uh, Jesus healed the man that was, they tore the roof down and sent him into Capernaum when he was preaching. And Jesus healed the man. Oh, thank you, Beverly. She's got it here before me. In Mark 2, Jesus healed a paralyzed man because of his friend's faith. And you think who you hang out with don't matter. Think about that. It does matter. It absolutely matters who you hang out with because bad company corrupts. It makes bad manners. We need to hang out with the right people. We, we need to run with the ones that God has put in our lives. But this is, this is where the rub is, y'all. This is where the spiritual rub is. This is some spiritual food right here. This ain't, a, this ain't the milk. This is the meat. Sometimes the people that we run with that are good company, sometimes good men, good women, people that you know are godly, God will move them out of your life. He'll move them out. That's where the rub's at. It's easy when we finally identify those that we don't want to hang with because of their bad company. But what's hard is when God moves those out of our life that we've become attached to. 
Don't be attached to anything but the Lord Jesus Christ. I shall not be moved. If all my friends walk away, I'm not going to be moved. Whatever happens in my life, I want to know that I'm going to trust and serve God. And if God doesn't keep me humble, which is a full-time job for him with me, I can tell you that. If God doesn't keep me humble, I'll, I'll run astray. I'll go the wrong path. I'll do the wrong thing. So this week, starting in Monday, evaluate your circle. Evaluate who's in your circle. Keep it small. Make God number one. Make your wife your husband number two, your children, your family. Church comes after that, by the way. God, family, church. Because God has to be number one. If you get that out of order and you put church above God or put your family above God or work above God, you've got it out of order. It's not going to work. God, family, ministry or church, work. Because you have to have it in the right order. Listen, God wants you to have a strong circle of friends. God wants you to have a strong um, ministry in whatever it is. But you have to keep your faith and trust in him and understand that bad company makes bad manners and will corrupt. But also, sometimes God wants to move those that are good company out of your life to move you to a different place. And that is such a hard lesson for me to learn, but I'm learning it. We have to trust God no matter what. No matter what, trust him. When I got born again, January 18, 2003, right before I got saved was hell on earth for me. Conviction for almost six months of hell is what I went through to the place I about lost my mind. And that's, that's the truth. No man could help me. No, no doctor could help me. No advice from a preacher could help me. No prayers from people helped me. Nothing could help me. The day I met Jesus Christ on that golf course and he lifted the burden of my sin away, that's what helped me. When he lifted that load that I was bearing, that I couldn't bear, that's what helped me. And when I felt like my feet were dangling over hell and all God had to do was just let go, I realized in this life, in this life, whether it's good or bad, when I'm stepping off of this earth, the only one that matters that's with me is my Lord Jesus Christ because he's the one that is going to take me on to be with him. He's the one that sustains me. He's the one that helps me in my time of trouble. He is my circle. Hallelujah. He is my circle. That's just what's on my heart. I hope this blesses and helps someone today. Praying for you guys. Pray y'all have a blessed week. Hopefully we'll be on here tomorrow at 8, 8 a.m. Between 8 and 8.30. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in His sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.